Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're gonna to talk about how to use root motion inside of Godot. So we're basically going to rebuild our 3D character controller from the ground up, but with root motion enabled. So we're gonna go through the process of getting our animations from Mixamo and converting them into being able to be used for root motion. We're going to rebuild out our character controller. We're gonna recode the entire thing and reset up our state machine and set up all of our root motion stuff. We're also gonna go through and create a quick camera controller. And we're gonna talk about how to handle it. So when your character is not looking at your camera, how do we handle that? How do we actually rotate our character in code based off of the direction of our camera? So that's what I have in store for you guys today. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually get a hold of our animations. When you're doing root motion, you actually are using the animation to actually move your character. So you're gonna need animations to kind of work with so that you can actually do the root motion. So what we'll do, is we'll come over to Mixamo, which I don't know if you guys have ever seen Mixamo. Uh, I have talked about it in previous tutorials as an awesome resource for us to create 3D characters because they offer free animations for us to use. And that's something that is nowhere else in the industry. So it's really cool to see and it's really useful. And of course, if you guys know of anywhere else that does this, and actually gives away free resources for animations, then please let me know because I'd love to promote their content. Now let's click login and then let's log in. Now in my case, I'm gonna log in with my Google account. So I'm gonna skip this part so you guys don't have to see that. All right, once we're logged in, you can see that we have a bunch of animations over here on the left. Now, if you are coming from my character controller tutorial, just skip this whole section. You should already have some animations downloaded. Just go to the next section. Now, what this does is Mixamo allows us to have lots of characters like this, and they also allow us to have lots of animations that we get to have for free. Now, in my case, it already remembered the character I was using, but if you just go into characters, you can pick a character and then go into animations and then let's pick an animation. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the basic movement pack. So there's actually a pack called, I believe it's movement. I know how to spell. If I type male, that might come up as well. Male locomotion pack. Now, if you want the female locomotion pack, you can use that one as well. I'm gonna use the male locomotion pack just because I have a male character here. So we'll just do that. You can see here's the actual locomotions that they have, which can be quite useful. It might be missing a few. Ah, uh, it looks like it has them all. Okay, so I think we're good. It's just really hard for me to see um, what it's looking at because the character just runs off into the distance. They're way over here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll click download and you will see that we have some download stuff. So we have a FBX binary, T pose, frames per second, and keyframe reduction. Now, in my case, I'm going to pull down the FBX. That's fine. T pose. That's also fine. And 30 frames per second is totally fine. We'll just do it all by default. If you change any of these values, it can change how your animations are perceived. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we'll click download and we'll let that pull down. We will click save and we will save it. Now, once we have it saved, we can basically just open it up and you can see we have a bunch of animations here. Now I'm going to go into my downloads. I'm gonna right click. I am going to extract it and click extract. And there we go. Now we have a bunch of these animations. Now, previously, I just had you guys open up Blender and I just had you guys import the animations and then just export them out. But since this is root motion, it's totally different. So if we come in here, we go to file, import FBX, and we import a single FBX from our downloads. So let's grab something like our walking animation right here. If we move this forward, you'll see that our character walks forward. And that's basically what root motion is for, right? It's supposed to allow us to walk our characters forward based off of actual bone movements. But something that people don't tell you is when you do root motion, you need to have a bone called your root bone. And a lot of times people use the hips right here 
to actually create your root bone. But with Godot, it gets kind of finicky because the root bone rotates. And when the root bone rotates, that really messes with the actual root motion of Godot. So to mitigate that, there's an add-on called Mixamo Root. Now, I forked this from Richard Perry, who forked it from another person, if I remember correctly. John Goss right here was the original creator. So props to him for creating this two years ago. And then Richard Perry kind of picked it up and started maintaining it. And then I had some crashing issues. So I went through and created a PR for that. So if it's not merged, use my version. If it is merged, then use his version because it's always good to use the creator's version. Now we're going to click code and we're going to download a zip. What this is going to do is it's going to allow us to have an add-on that will automatically create our root bone for us. And that's what we need. So if we were to import this into Godot, the character would wobble side to side like this because when you look at this bone, you'll see that as the person takes their step right here, they actually rotate their bone. You can see that bone get moved slightly to the side. So the whole character would rotate like this constantly. And we can't have that. So that's what this add-on aims to resolve. So if we create a new Blender and we don't save our file, we hit Control A, X, Delete. We go to Edit, we go to Preferences, and then we come in here and we install and we navigate to our Mixamo root.main, install that add-on and then enable it. Once we do that, if we hit N, you can see we have a Mixamo tab right here. We can open that up right here and you will see that we have all sorts of options. Now, pretty much I don't use any of these options other than insert root and our source directory. The rest of this means nothing to me, pretty much. So um, you can remove prefects if you want to get rid of Mixamo rig. You can delete the armatures and that will basically allow you to go in and say, I already have an armature. I just want the animations. Um, but in my case, I'm going to have both of these guys because I like to do it a little bit more manual way. It gives me a little bit more control. So what I'll do is I'm going to set my source directory. I'm going to click on this little file icon and I'm going to go to root and I'm going to go to downloads mail locomotion pack. And you will see, I have a bunch of FBXs here. So what I'll do is I'll hit accept and I will import my animations. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna batch go in and import all of my animations. Now, if we look at that original walking animation, which I believe is right here, you will see that now there's a bone down there. And that's the big thing that we're looking for, for our root motion is to have that actual root bone to exist because it has to inform us on where the character needs to go. Now, once we have this, I'm going to select all of my armatures except for this one right here. So this little T-pose one, armature number two with this little mesh icon. We'll just grab all the other armatures that's not this one and we will delete them. And then pretty much the rest of this is useless to us. Once we have this, all we have to do is go into our animation tab Click on Dope Sheet, change it to Action Editor, and then select different actions. As soon as we select our armature here. So then we can select different animations and you'll see that we have jumping, we have strafing, we have walking, things like that. So it already has all of our stuff basically set up for us. Now all we have to do is just export this. So if I click on my armature, file, export as a GLTF. Now, if you have Blender support enabled on Godot, you can just export it out and you're golden. You're good to go. Now, when we want to export our stuff, we need to have a Godot project. Now, I've already created one, which is just an empty project. It's called Root Motion Tutorial. It's right here. So I'm going to open that up and I'm just going to put character.glb and I will export that guy out. We're gonna let that think for a second. And as soon as it finishes, we can go into Godot and Godot is going to import it. Now we're basically 90% of the way there. Now, something that we have to do is we have to actually set up our import settings for this character. So what we can do is we can double click on our character and you'll see it created a gigantic box here. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll come into our, our scene, we'll change our root type 
to a character like that. And then we'll come down here and we'll go into our animations here. Our animations need to loop. We can't have them not loop or else it's just going to basically take a step forward and then stop. And we can't have that. So we need to actually loop our animation. So we'll click on idle and we'll say linear. So the way that different loop modes work is basically you have none, which does no looping, linear, which will loop it over and over. So it, it'll go from frame zero to the end frame. So let's say 100, and then it will go back to zero and then go to 100 and go back to zero. Ping pong, on the other hand, works kind of like a game of ping pong. The animation goes from zero to 100, and then it goes from 100 to zero. So if you have an animation that you need it to kind of wave back and forth, like a flag or something like that, then ping pong is the animation that you're looking for. But in my case, I'm gonna set this to linear, and then we'll go to our left strafe. We'll set that to linear. We're gonna do left strafe walking, linear, right strafe, linear, right strafe walking, linear, standard run, linear, and walking, linear and that should be pretty much all of this so we're going to click re-import and it's going to take Godot a second to think about it but it's going to re-import it and then we're going to right click our character and we are going to create a new inherited scene and here is our character so now if we click on our animation player you can see if we choose for instance a walk animation and we hit play you will see that our character is walking which is awesome right so that's great, but our character is walking forward and I don't really want my character walk physically forward. I want them to walk with root motion. So how do we do that? Well, to do root motion, you need to have an, an animation tree node. So we're gonna right click our character, add in a child node and add in an animation tree node. And then we're gonna come over here, select animation player, and pick our animation player like so. We're gonna click okay and then we're gonna change our tree root to a state machine. And the reason why I'm choosing a state machine is because I prefer a state machine. If you have a different one that you wanna use, you can use that one. It's not gonna affect the root motion at all. Now we can select our root motion, which is right here. If we click on a track and we click assign, we can assign our actual root motion bone, which in our case is our Mixamo root bone. So we'll click okay. And now our root motion should just work. So now we can just hit right click, add animation, and let's add a walking animation. And let's just drag this transition into here. And then let's click on our animation tree and click active. And you will see that our character is now walking, which is awesome, right? Kind of, how do we know our character is walking forward? And how do we know if they're actually you know, doing anything? Well, what we can do is we can add in what's called a root motion viewer. So if we right click our character, add a child node and type root, you can see we have a root motion viewer. We can hit enter and we can set our animation path to our animation tree and hit okay. And that is how you know that our root motion is successful. So awesome. This means that we're pretty much good to go. We're ready to actually build out our character's entire system. And it's gonna be really quick because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my animation tree and I'm gonna actually set it up so that way we can set this up really fast. So what I'll do is I'm going to get rid of our walking animation. I'm gonna right click, add in a blend space 2D. I'm going to right click, add in an animation, add in an idle. And I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to drag it to my idle. I'm going to drag it up to my blend space. I'm going to drag it back down to my idle. And you'll see our characters kind of freaking out. Now, why is that? Well, what this is doing is it's because it's transitioning instantly. If we come over here and we click on this guy right here, we can go into our switch, go into our advanced and just change condition to moving like that. And then we can click on this guy and do the same thing. We could just say idle. Now, if you want more information about all of this, Go check out my 3D character controller for Godot 4 video and check that out because I go into actual in-depth on how all this works and why it works and things like that. But I don't really want this tutorial to be four hours long. So I'm just going to set this up real quick for you. So what we'll do is we'll click on our pencil icon right here and you'll see that we have a blending shape like this. I can just click on my little pencil and I can click 
down here like so, add animation, and I will add in walking. And then I will click down here, add animation, standard run. I will click over here, add animation, left strafe. And I will click over here, add animation, left strafe. Now, I think I might have the wrong animation. So if I click on this guy and I click right here, that's left strafe, this is left strafe walking. So let's flip those guys like so. And then I will right click right here, add animation, right strafe walking, right click, add animation, right strafe. I'll click up here, add animation, and we'll do a walking animation. And I'll pull this guy to probably about, I don't know, about here-ish. And instead of doing a walking animation, I'm gonna make it play mode backwards. So our character is walking backwards. So now if we click on this guy, and we go to our root and we hit play, you'll see our characters kind of acting really funky, but that's because of this guy right here. If we drag this guy forward, you'll see that we are now walking. If we drag it forward further, we are now running. If we drag this backwards, you'll see our characters walking backwards. If we turn this to the left, our character goes to the left. And if we turn this to the right, our character goes to the right. Easy enough. And that's basically how we can actually set up our character's animation. Now we need to add in collision. So we'll come up to our character. We're going to right click it, add in a child node, and add in a collision shape 3D. We'll come in here, we'll make it into a capsule shape, and we'll just drag it up so it matches our player. Once we have that, we basically just need to create our camera. So I'm going to hit Control S. I'm going to save this as character.tscn. And then I'm gonna come into my, and then I'm gonna create a new scene. So scene, new scene, and this is gonna be our test scene. We're gonna go to 3D scene, right click, add in a child node, add in a mesh instance 3D. We're gonna add in a box mesh, and I'm going to scale this guy down and scale this guy up. So that way we have some kind of scene to work with. I'm gonna right click, add another child node, add in a static, body 3D. I'm going to right click, add another child node. I'm going to add in a collision shape 3D and we will make that into a box shape. Now, all of this stuff is not necessary for you to do the rest of this tutorial, but it's useful for us to do our testing. So we'll drag this guy out like that and make it nice and big. And then we will drag our character.tscn into our node 3D scene, just like that. Simple enough. And I'll drag this guy down. So that way it's not quite, there we go. We should probably make this just a touch bigger. There we are. Now, once we have this, we need to set up our camera. And I've already gone through how to do this in the third person character controller tutorial. So I'm gonna run through this super duper quick and have it build out. So first things first, we're gonna right click on our node 2D. We're gonna add in a node 3D. We're going to right click, add in a child node, add in a spring arm 3D. And then we're gonna right click that spring arm and we're gonna add in a camera 3D. Now I'm gonna bring this camera out something like this. I'm gonna bring my spring arm up somewhere like this. And actually I'll probably reset this guy to zero. There we go. And we'll pull this back to something like that. So that way we have ourselves a location that our character can actually look at. Now I'm going to right click my node 3D. I'm gonna attach a script and I'm just gonna call it camera controller. And we are going to come in here and do a quick five second camera controller. So we'll come in here, we'll type global position is equal to, and we need to get access to our character. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my character. I'm gonna to go to node, I'm gonna to go to groups and I'm gonna add this character to the character group. I'm gonna copy it like so. And I'm gonna say get, tree dot get nodes in group quote character i'm going to pull back that first instance dot global underscore position and there we go and then i need to make it so we can actually rotate our camera left and right when we move around so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say funk underscore input event and i'm just going to say if event is input event mouse motion, then we will say rotation is equal to 
Vector 3, Clamp, Rotation.x, Minus, Event, Dot, Relative, Dot, Y, Divided by 1000, Multiplied by some kind of sensitivity value. So we need some kind of sensitivity value to determine how much we want to rotate when the user rotates their mouse. So what we'll do is we'll come up here and we'll say at export var sensitivity. And then we'll come over here and we'll say sensitivity comma minus one comma 0.25F. And in my testing, that's been a pretty decent number for what it's worth. And then we'll hit comma. Let me take a look at this real quick. So vector three clamp, blah, blah, blah. So that should work. That'll get back our first. Yep, that'll get back our first one. And then we can just come in here and say rotation dot y minus our motion dot relative dot x divided by 1000 multiplied by sensitivity comma zero. And it's upset because we have an F here because I'm used to C sharp. So if we get rid of that, hopefully that will fix it. Cannot use simple annotation without a type initializer. That's because we're not telling it to be an integer type. So we'll do that and that'll fix that. In identifier motion is not declared. And that's because this should be instead event, not motion. So we'll do that and that should do it. Now if I control S, I will put this as test scene like that. And we're gonna need to set our sensitivity to something. So we'll set this equal to something like five, like that. And then if we hit play, you will see that we can now rotate our camera, which is awesome. Now we do have some problems here. First one being we are way too close to our character. If we go to our spring arm, we can actually adjust this to something like five and that will help with that. So you can see now we are far enough away that it should be okay relatively. We also need to set it up so that we're not snapping into our character. And I think the reason for that, my guess would be if I take a look at my test scene here and I look at my spring arm, I think my spring arm is colliding with my character. So let's change this to a collision mask of three. So that way it's not colliding with our player. That means that our floor will also need to be on collision layer of three. So that way it doesn't collide with it or so that way it does collide with it. And if we hit control S and if we want to solve that issue with it not capturing our mouse, we can just come in here to our ready and say input dot mouse mode. And we'll put that equal to input mouse mode captured and that will capture our mouse. So now if we hit play, there we go. We have ourselves a very basic camera controller. Now, like I said, if you wanna go more in depth on why or how or things like that, go check out my 3D character controller because that kinda of goes over all of this in, in way more detail. Now we need to actually code out our character controller. So let's go to our character controller scene. Let's right click our character and attach a script. And we're just gonna call it character.gd, that's fine. So we will add that in. And it actually has a pre-built setup for us. Unfortunately, most of it's not gonna be super useful to us because we're going to need to actually hand build a lot of this because we're gonna be doing a lot of changes to how we're actually handling our logic here. So what I'll do is first we'll set up our character doing root motion and we'll actually set up our animation tree stuff. So we have our animation tree right here and we have our uh, movement variables set up. What we need to do is we need to basically say, hey, when we move our character, it's basically going to set a variable inside of our animation tree to say that we're moving. Now we have a whole thing here where we actually kind of do that here. So we get an input direct direction and then we get a direction here, which is a transform basis. And then we kind of go from there. Now you could just basically come in here and say dollar sign animation tree dot set. And then we can basically just set our movement 
equal to basically if our direction does not equal vector three dot zero. And then we could do the same thing, but instead for our idle and just say, if it does equal vector three dot zero. And that basically, if we hit play on our test scene. So I'm just going to hit play, select my current scene, and that'll do that. You'll see a, our character just fell into the ground. So that's not a good sign. So let's see what's going on there. Our character is not actually in the ground. So he shouldn't have fallen into the ground. Is my static body? We refresh this. Yeah. Interesting. We're falling into the ground. So that's never good. I dragged this into here just to see. Our static body has an exclamation point. So my guess is it's because my static body probably needs to be reset to zero, or I guess to one and one, and then set this to one. Well, we'll have to unhook here. One and one, and then change our mesh size up to something large like so and then grab our collision shape. And you can see our collision shape is actually below the ground. So that's probably why I was probably just moving way too fast for it to be a good idea. And I'm gonna expand this guy out, something like this. We'll take a look, see what happens. We'll line this guy up, there we go. Now, if we refresh, let's see if that fixes our problem. There we go. Now, if we hit, forward backwards you'll see that the character actually moves forward and backwards which is pretty good now you'll notice that as we do our movements a this way is forward this way is backwards you can see he's not going based off of camera direction you'll also notice that we're not actually doing it the proper animation either and the reason why is because when we do our movement we need to actually set our um, blend shapes parameter to the correct value. So what I'll come in here, I'll just say dollar sign animation tree dot set like this. And I will set my blend shape 2D blend position equal to my direction. And then we'll hit control S, we'll refresh this guy and let's take a look. So if we hit backwards, forwards, left, right, you'll notice that it looks like it's going backwards. So let's try doing minus direction. We'll refresh that. And there you go. Now we are running into some slight issues with our Y direction. And my guess is that it has to do with potentially the, if I change this to input, direction what happens real quick and there we go so you see we're going backwards so if we were to aim it you know semi properly so once we have our minus input dir our, our animations are playing we actually need to act, set up our root motion right now we're going off of our characters um move and slide here off of basically a direction multiplied by speed and we don't want to do that we actually want to handle it based off of our actual character's movement based off of their actual feet movement. So this is where things will get kind of funky. Now, what we have to do is we basically need to get our rotation. So we can come on here and say, var current rotation is equal to transform.basis.get rotation quinturnian. And then we could just say var velocity is equal to current rotation dot normalized multiplied by our dollar sign animation tree dot get root motion position like that. And that'll set our velocity based off of where we actually are walking. So if we were to take all of this section where we're setting our velocity and we were to comment that out, which I believe is control K for comment, then we can basically just refresh this. And in theory, this should work. We should be able to play our game. Now we have an invalid get index on base nil. That's because our velocity does not exist. 
and that's because we're setting a velocity parameter here instead of just setting it because I forgot that um, the root version of a character node actually has velocity declared. So I was overriding it. So let's try that. Now, if we press forward, you'll see that our character, well, they don't really do anything. And I think our um, controls are backwards. At least it seems like it's backwards. So we'll have to see what's going on with that. But you'll notice that, well, frankly, we're not moving, right? So what's going on with that? When we do this, we're getting back a value, but we're not getting a value over time. So we need to divide this value by our delta. And we'll have to come to the front and then set this guy like this. And that will set up our velocity to be proper. So now if we hit refresh, you'll see if I hit back, our character moves forward. If I hit backwards, our character moves backwards. So you can see that it actually moves physically. Our character is moving the correct speed. If we hit left, or I guess right in my case, our character will move to the left. If we hit right, our character moves to the right. And you can see how it works. It actually is a physical movement. It's no longer constrained to a speed value. It's based off of our actual animation's speed value. And that's the power of root motion. So now I know what you might be asking. Okay, so how can I translate this into somewhat like a character controller? Well, we already have our mouse motion, which is awesome. All we really need is to make it so that our character will rotate based off of the camera position, right? Because currently it's static, right? They go forward, backward, left, right, based off of the global position that they're in, not based off of their local position. Well, to do that, it's actually quite simple. We'll come up to the top up here and we will set a variable called horizontal rotation or camera rotation. So we'll say var h underscore rotation is equal to, and we're gonna have to get a hold of our camera controller. Now, I don't have access to my camera controller, so what I'll do is I'll click on my Node 3D, we'll go into Node Groups, and we'll type camera controller like that. We'll copy this, and we'll just say get, get tree dot get nodes in group, quote, paste camera controller. We'll pull back the first instance of it, and we'll pull back its global underscore transform dot basis dot get underscore Euler. And we'll pull back our Y on that. Now, hopefully I spelled all that correct because we didn't really get any um, auto completion there. So I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here, but hopefully that will work. And then all we have to do is we need to take this H rotation and we basically need to change our direction based off of that value. And what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll get rid of these input directions like so. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say var direction is equal to a vector three input dot get action strength And we'll pull back our left first. So we'll type left for UI left minus our input dot get action strength quote right for UI right comma zero comma. And then we have to get our other section as well. So we have to get our Z direction, which is basically going to be the exact same thing as this, except for it's going to be up and down. So we'll grab this and we will say up for UI up, providing that UI up exists. It does, it's just at the bottom, UI up and then down for UI down. And then all we have to do is set up our direction to be rotated. So what we'll do is we'll say direction 
dot equals direction dot rotated and we'll need to actually rotate it based off of our camera controller so we'll say vector three dot up as our up vector and then we could just say h rot like that dot normalized and it says identifier h rot was not uh, declared that's because i have a capital r so i guess i should stick with lowercase r if i remember correctly that's godot standards and i had some people telling me i should use godot standards so i'll do that and then we will pass in our blend position equal to our direction like that and hopefully that will just work so we'll hit refresh and let's test it out so we'll hit w s a d if we rotate that kind of works but not really it is going off of our rotation which is good actually i think it is working i just think that it's yeah i think it's actually working i just don't think that um that our forward and backward is working the way we want it to. So let's take a look and let's print out our direction. I think I know what's going on. Let me take a look at our script here. We're passing in a vector two, if I remember correctly. No, we're passing in a vector three. So my question is, I think this needs to be a vector two like this and i think we need to say direction dot x comma direction dot z and now if we hit play let's see what that does so we hit forward we start backing up we hit s we start running forward awesome so now if we move our camera you'll see that our character reacts kind of as you would expect, although they're not quite as we would fully expect them to. So we need to set up our character so that we can rotate it with our camera while we're running around while still maintaining their direction that they're attempting to go. So if we head back here, we come down here, let's come down to where we are setting our velocity. And I believe we are setting our current rotation right here based off of that so i think we'll come up here and we'll just say rotation is equal to a vector three rotation dot x comma rotation dot y comma a tan two minus direction dot x comma minus direction dot z comma rotation dot z and hopefully that will actually fix our issues here so let's come in here we'll hit w s well that sort of worked but not really it's quite broken now now, the reason why it's broken is because if we look at our animation blend position, we're setting it to whatever our direction is. And if we rotate our character, that's going to really mess up our rotation. Now, I don't want to get rid of this because I'm going to show you guys how to do something cool in the future. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it like that. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set this to a new vector zero minus one like that and that will basically allow you to have your character controller like you would expect so if we hit play here and we move we move forward we can run around like you would expect we can rotate our camera and move our character and there we go now you'll notice that when we let go our character rotates to whatever is considered zero and we don't want that so we got to actually check for that so we'll come into our rotation and we'll just say if direction does not equal a vector 3.0, then do this. That way it doesn't rotate the player when we let off of our movement. So that way our character stays in that rotation. So if we go this way, our character stays that direction like that.
And there we go. Now, if you remember from our actual character controller tutorial, we made it so that when you right clicked, it would make your character focus in on a direction, right? They would actually focus in and they would strafe and do things like that. Well, if we wanna keep that control, all we have to do is basically just reset it up. So go to our test scene, click on our camera, go to 3D, let's right click, add in a child node, add in a node 3D. We'll drag this guy up to our node 3D. We'll call this look at like that. And then we'll just drag this guy really far off in the distance. And it needs to be pretty far off in the distance for it to work. And yes, I realize there are ways to do this without doing it this way, but I just like doing it this way. To me, it just works really well. So we'll go back to our character script like so. And we'll basically come in here and just say, on physics process, we'll just say var look at is equal to get tree dot get nodes in group quote camera controller we'll pull back that first instance and it will just say dot get node and we'll pass in our path of look at and i believe it was a capital a if i remember correctly Let's take a look at our scene. It is capital A, so perfect. And then we can just come down here and say, okay, if our right mouse button is down, then we can basically set our blend position. So input is mouse button pressed, and we'll just say right mouse button like that. And then we'll just uncomment this guy. And We'll need to also check for that for our rotation because when we do this, we don't want our character to rotate to a position. We want them to actually look at a position. So kind of like how we have this guy here, we need to just check for that. So we'll just say if input dot is mouse button pressed and we'll do mouse button right. Now, customarily, I like to do bindings for these, but for this tutorial, it'll just make it easier for me to do it this way. We'll say look at, and we'll pass in our look at position. And we actually need to have look underscore at like that. And that'll make it so that our character looks at that position. And then I'll just say EL, if our direction is not vector zero, then rotate our position. And that should basically set that up, hopefully for success. So we can refresh, we can move left, we can move right, we can left click and we have a crash. So it says invalid function, look at in base, cannot argue, uh, convert my object to a position. So dot global underscore position. We'll refresh that. And you'll see our character now faces the wrong direction. So what we can do, and to mitigate that, we can just go into our test scene, we can grab our look at, and let's actually just make it look at our camera instead. So we'll just drag this to the other side, and then we'll hit refresh. And you'll see that our character, if we right click, now looks in the proper direction. And there we go. So now we have a character controller that's much like what you would expect in most games. Now you'll notice that our character does lean forward ever so slightly. And I think the reason why that is, is because our direction Y probably needs to be flipped. So let me see if I can do this. Let's go to our script. Let's come down here. Let's change our direction Z to just regular direction Z. Also, let's take a look at our look at, and instead of doing look at dot global position, let's do look at space vector three, global position dot X comma, global position dot Y comma, and then same thing with our look at global position 
dot z and that's basically going to fix our issue where we were running into our character kind of moving up and down and that's because we actually can't look up and down and have it um not orient our character if that makes sense so this will help keep our character orientation correct and then we can just hit refresh right click and that should be okay and then if we hit forward there we go we click and our stuff is still quite broken because it's not based off of our camera position and the reason why is because we're setting our direction to direction dot rotated normalized so if we come up here we basically just check to see if our mouse button is pressed then we could basically just say hey if it's pressed don't worry about it so we'll just grab this and say if our button is not pressed, then we will able we will rotate our character based off of our camera. Because previously we were setting our direction so that it was um, normalized off of the camera rotation. But when the camera is locked onto something, I don't need to change states. I just need to stay looking forward, if that makes sense. So now I should be able to hit play and I should be able to go left, right, up, down, and I can move my camera and my character respects that. I can hold click and my character respects that as well. And it's pretty much as you would expect. Awesome. And that's basically how you do a root motion system with a character controller inside of Godot. So if you like this video, go and hit that like button. And hey, you know, if you dislike this video, go and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video was a viewer suggested video. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to take a look at them. I am working on that vaulting system as well. That'll probably just be a quick update. It'll probably be like a five second video, hopefully. Although for me, a five second video means about 20 minutes, but hopefully it will be a pretty quick one. Once I figure it out, I think I need to shut off gravity while the character climbs. But for right now, that's something that I'm investigating. And hey, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Or you can jump on the Discord. Link is in the description and anybody on the Discord is always willing to help you out with any issues you might be having. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all next time. Thanks.